brother. If you miss your shout, you're going to get it later. Somebody say amen in here. Hallelujah. You can be seated in the presence of God. If you can. Amen. I don't know about you, but every time I come home, I come to give God some praise. I'm excited about the reason that we're here today to celebrate, amen, these wonderful doorkeepers of this house. Somebody say hallelujah. The Hilda McBride Joint Usher Board. Somebody say Joint Usher Board. Joint Usher Board. Amen. You can actually take that word joint and conflict that word to fly. <laughs> Y'all yeah, don't know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember what you used to say, that's the joint? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, 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 that's fly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, I know the kids may not use fly, but that's, that's, that's crazy. That's crazy. Somebody say hallelujah. We give God glory and we give him honor. We thank God, amen, for the angel of this house, our bishop. Amen. In his absence, we should have let down M. Duncan. Amen. And we thank God for him and for his leadership. Hallelujah. And uh, we give God glory and honor for the uh, co-pastor, the assistant pastor of this wonderful house. Amen. Pastor, the rep of the Hope. Amen. Come on, give God some praise for them. Hallelujah. And uh, we give God all the glory and all the honor. We thank God for my beautiful wife, my lovely wife. Amen. My wife, my girlfriend, and my side chick. Somebody say, hey, hallelujah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Y'all think that's a joke when I say that, but I believe that. I mean that. And what I'm telling you is subliminally is she's fulfilling all my needs. The Lord is my shepherd, and he know what I want. Somebody say hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah, we thank God. Amen. Amen. We give him glory. Listen, we thank God for this wonderful usher boy. They look good, y'all. So I came in here, and I said, they right crispy. Amen. I was looking at them suits, and them, and them, and them, uh, them set jokes. Y'all look right crispy. Hey, man, looking good. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. We thank God for you and for you. And by the way, I want to give God glory for those that are filling in. Amen. Minister d Lewis. Yeah. And, and, and uh, Minister Training Kyrie. Yeah, he's, he's junior. That's junior. Junior's filling in. Amen. <laughs> God, amen, for his grace and for his mercy. Hallelujah. We want to give God glory for each and every one of you. Amen. But we have uh, uh, Brother Noble Jackson came all the way from Jersey with me. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. He's the, he's the one who bossed us around all day, but it's all good. You know. he, he bossed us around. And y'all, and y'all know Brother Emmett all the way from Jersey as well. Amen. Listen, we just thank God for each and every one of you, and uh, we want, we are on assignment. We want to get to this and get on out your way, amen, so we can uh, give God some more praise and give him some more glory, because you guys have made it another year, amen. Y'all may not understand, but it's hard to deal with people, uh-huh, and they're the first touch ministry, which means they, they, they are the first in contact with the congregants who enter the gate. Yeah, and some of them come with them issues and them attitudes and all these other various deep things they're dealing with. Amen. Just got out of the car from an argument with their husband or their wife and they're coming into the church. Amen. And they have to deal with them. So we got to pray for them. Amen, somebody. And uh, we want to encourage you uh, this morning Amen. And uh, if you would just join me, let's move. Amen. If there's anything or anyone I forgot, amen, take it, uh, charge it to my heart, my, my head, not my heart. Amen. We thank God for Deacon Joel Jackson back there. I want to find out if uh, you and you and Noble are related, these Jacksons over here. 
Because both of y'all action Jackson. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. I tell you, the God of the truth. Hallelujah. Old noble, 77 years old, and a work of 40 year old under the table. Somebody say hallelujah. Yeah, we give God glory. Come on, let's stand and let's get the text. Luke chapter 18. Luke chapter 18. Amen. Luke chapter 18. Hallelujah. I'm going to deal with verse number 4 and 5 as a conquest of introduction. Amen. When you have it, say word. Word. Luke chapter 18, verse number 4 and 5. I'm in the New Living Translation. This makes sense as to my context. And the word of God reads, The judge ignored her for a while. But finally he said to himself, I don't fear God or care about people. But this woman is driving me crazy. I'm going to see that she gets justice because she is wearing me out with her constant requests. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. This is church and you need a subject. And I want to encourage you this morning with three words. Look your neighbor day in the dead in the face and tell them, never, never. give yeah, look, look, look at your next name and say, never, never give, give up. up. You might be seated in the presence of God. Never, never give, give up. up. Somebody say amen in here. Amen. Mm, thank you, Jesus. Father, bless us now. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. It was Napoleon Hill who said, and I quote, wishing will not bring a successful result. Mm -hmm. But desiring a result with a state of mind that becomes an obsession, then planning definite ways and means to achieve it, and backing those plans with persistence, which does not recognize failure, will produce results. Amen. He, he also said, patience, persistence, and perspiration make an unbeatable combination for success. Amen. I understand that we are here to celebrate the Hilda McBride Joint Usher Board, and as I contemplated cognitively what I wanted to talk about this weekend, because I needed to encourage you, I heard the word, uh, never give up, but I needed something. Who would I use? Who would I use to handsomely handle this task of becoming my heuristic device to help me prove my thesis this weekend. Amen. And, 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 and then it hit me, and then it hit me. What about the unstoppable woman in Luke chapter 18 who, who, who refused to cave in and capitulate until, as Prophet Amos says, justice ran down like water and righteousness like a mighty stream. Somebody say hallelujah. Let me give you some quick context so you can respect the content. In uh, Luke chapter, chapter 17, we see Christology conflated with eschatology. Jesus was taking knowledge about the kingdom and the second coming to Pharisees who couldn't spiritually see. Amen, somebody. It's a rough road to try and cause someone who can't spiritually see uh, to understand things that are spiritual. It is easy for us to cause those who are not in Christ to see things that are carnal rather than those seeing things that are spiritual. It seems to be so hard to get people to understand things that are spiritual. We simply receive easily things that are carnal versus things that are spiritual. Somebody know what I'm talking about in here. You can be on the door and try to explain to someone the bar is across the middle row. You cannot walk down there and they want to know why. So, woo, 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 somebody ought to say amen. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's what they'll do. So watch this here now. He, he's trying to explain spiritually to people who couldn't see. And then as we make it into our text, I need you to notice something that most people miss. Yeah, it's there. It's glaring, but we miss it. It's, it's there, but we miss it. Somebody say we miss it. Uh, uh, watch this. This story never really happened. Yeah, it, it, it's Jesus giving an illustration to inculcate and introduce a significant truth about persistence in prayer. Somebody ought to say, hey, man, in this place. It, it never really took place. It, it, it's Jesus kicking the willy bobo, trying to get them to understand that there's something about being persistent when you go before the Lord. You, uh, Somebody, I feel preachy already, but I got the rule. Somebody say, how that? Look, look, look at verse 1 through 3. Y'all know, y'all know how I roll. Look at the Bible. Look at the Bible. Amen. Look at Luke chapter 18, verses 1 through 3. You know, you know who I am. You know I'm a slave to the text. Don't you dare close your Bible. Look at verse number 1 through 3. Somebody say thank you. The text says, one day Jesus told his disciples a story to show that they should always pray and never give up. There was a judge in a certain city, he said, who neither feared God nor cared about people. A widow of that city came to him repeatedly, yeah, repeatedly saying, give me justice in this dispute with my enemy. Somebody say hallelujah. The text gives me two significant details about this woman. Number one, she was a widow. Amen, somebody. And, and, and number two, she wants justice. Somebody ought to say amen. Woo, I know when you're standing on that door, sometimes you want justice. <laughs> Somebody say amen. I, I know sometimes some folk will make you really want some justice. Amen, somebody. Some, sometimes some folk make you want to slap their face till it's off. Somebody ought to say amen. Woo, am I talking right up in here? Well, 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 what the text doesn't tell me is uh, it doesn't give me any details about her husband or the justice that she's seeking. It, it doesn't tell me anything about that. Somebody say hallelujah. But, 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 you know, my thinking, my cognitive thinking, I have to wonder, is it possible that she's seeking justice for her husband that was killed in Tulsa or Charlotte by a police officer who appears to have been act impacted by implicit bias? Uh, is it possible that she's seeking Seeking justice for a son that's been sentenced to life by a criminal justice system captured by cupidity instead of common sense. Could it be possible? Hey, somebody say, could it be possible? Uh, uh, what I do know about this woman is that she was determined to get what she came for. Oh, uh, that's good right there. That's a preach right there all by itself. She, she was determined to get what she came for. In other words, there's some stuff I don't know about this woman in the text. And trust me, there's some stuff I don't know about this contemporary context. But I have a sneaky suspicion that somebody came to this church this afternoon to bet me back this church because you need something from the Lord. Somebody came up in here tonight because uh, there's something you need from the Lord. Uh, and look at your neighbor and say, he's going to tell us how to get it tonight. Yeah. Give God a hand clap of praise right quick. He's good God. I, I feel it already. The text says, say the, say the text says. The text says uh, uh, in, in chapter 4, verse 18, uh, chapter 18, verse number 4, it says the judge ignored her for a while. Mm. Uh, please catch this. The judge ignored her for a while, but finally he said to himself, I don't fear God or care about people. Oh, <laughs> uh, this is good, everybody. All right, all right. Point number one. So if I'm never, if I'm really never going to give up, first of all, I must have a predetermined course of action. Ooh, are you with me up in here? Uh, if I'm really never going to give up, I must have a predetermined course of action. There must be clarity of vision. Uh, uh, somebody ought to say amen. There, 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 there must be clarity of vision. There must be something in you that can see clearly now that the rain has gone. Uh, somebody ought to shout hallelujah in here. Uh, if I'm really never going to give up, there's some things that I have to do. Uh, and one of them is have clarity of vision. Somebody say clarity. I must have a predetermined course of action. I can't uh, just operate willy-nilly. I've got to have a plan. Somebody 
somebody with a shout hallelujah. Uh, let me ask you a question. What are your goals? Uh huh. Okay. What, what, what are your goals? What, what are your goals? What goals do you have in life? What goals uh, do you have to think that you dream about? What are your dreams? What, what are you thinking about on a daily basis? What are your goals? Uh, what is your predetermined course of action uh, as it pertains to your life? What are your goals? Show what are my goals? What are my goals? Zig 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 Sigma says uh, a goal properly set is halfway reached. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Watch this. Uh, Michelangelo said the greater danger for most of us isn't that our aim is too high and miss it, but that it's too low and we reach it. Oh, wow. <laughs> Somebody ought to say amen up in here. Oh, God. Watch this. Watch this. Benjamin E. Mays said, not failure, but low aim is sin. Somebody would have shouted right there. You, 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 somebody's wig must have stood a flew off. You should have ran out the door right there. Why? Because, the, oh God, somebody would have said amen up in here. It is not failure, but low aim is sin. Yeah. When you don't reach for the sky, when you don't reach for the hills, when you don't reach for what God has for you, you are in sin. Somebody would have shouted hallelujah. Why? Because the Bible says uh, the cattle upon a thousand hills belongs to the Lord, uh, which tells me that it belongs to me because I am his child. Somebody shout hallelujah. Oh God. Y'all ready, ready for this? Are y'all ready for this? Can you handle this? Watch this. Watch this. But secondly, but then secondly, secondly, I'm moving on. I, I ain't going to be up here too jump. I'm going to hit it quick. Somebody say amen in here. Uh, but then secondly, secondly, if I'm going to never give up, uh, watch this. This is going to hurt somebody. I need to position or reposition myself within the proximity of the right people and places. <laughs> Ooh, uh, if I'm really, really, if I'm really never going to give up, uh, I need to position or reposition myself within the proximity of right people and right places. Watch this. Uh, if you pull out your cell phone right now and let me see your contacts, uh, I'll tell you who you are. Yeah, 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 yeah. If you show me your cell phone, let me see your contact, I'll show you who you are. Somebody ought to say amen. Is there somebody in your, your phone who's building you up? Is there somebody in your phone who's telling you that you're going to be great? Is there somebody who you talk to who tells you that the sky is the limit? Or is there somebody who's telling you, why are you doing that? You can't accomplish that. What do you do? Is there somebody in there who says, how are we going to make it? God, oh God, shucks, I'm preaching already. Is, 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 is there anybody in your phone, amen, who you talk to, who gives you something common every day, or is there somebody in your phone who tells you every single day that you are the best thing that ever happened to this earth? Oh God, I ain't talking about your wife or your husband, I'm talking about somebody in your, somebody want to say amen. Why? Because your wife or your husband know I better build him or her up or we're going to be poor and broke. Somebody ought to say amen up in here. I better tell him or her that they can accomplish everything or we're going to be poor and broke. Yeah. Why? Because every man wants to please that wife. Somebody ought to say hallelujah. We don't work five jobs like a Jamaican. Amen. Because we need to please that. Somebody ought to shout please her. Please her. Please her. Please her. If you show me your contacts, I'll show you uh, who you are. I, I, I want to see who's in your phone, because your phone will tell me who you are. Somebody say amen up in here. I, I can look at your pictures and tell who you are. Yeah, I can look, yeah, mm -hmm. is there anything spiritual in your phone, or is there something nasty? Somebody say hallelujah. Are you showing legs and panties and booty, or are you showing some things that are going to build you up every day? Somebody want to show hallelujah. Why? Because those things are constantly built, taking you down, and you don't even know it. Right. Woo! Somebody want to shout hallelujah. And, and please, my brothers and my, my brothers, listen to me very, very closely. If those are the things you watching, those are the things you're looking at on a constant basis, I'm here to let you know and drop the bomb on you. Your wife can't perform what you're looking at. Oh, you ain't got that. You missed that. You, you missed that. Yeah. Your wife ain't going to let you flip her upside down and do all kind of foolery if that's what you're watching. You are bound. Somebody say hallelujah in here. You are bound for failure. 
Y'all know I preach the whole gospel, the whole capsule. I'm not here to play no games. Somebody say amen. Uh, my sermon fix marriages. My sermon fix everything. Somebody say amen in here. Oh, God. Watch this. Watch this. Let me ask you a question. Who's in your circle of influence? Who's in your circle of influence? Who is influencing you? Who's speaking into your life? Who's telling you all of the things you need to hear in order to make you achieve and to grow, grow, and flow? Who, who's telling you? Who's speaking? Who is your circle of influence? Somebody say, Hallelujah. Misery loves company. Yeah. And if you're surrounding yourself with miserable people, you'll never succeed because you're going to constantly be miserable. So, somebody say amen up in here. If you want to surround yourself with miserable folk, you are always going to be miserable. You better surround your miserable self with somebody who's bubbly in their spirit and always talking positive. We're going to make it, baby. It's going to be, we're going to get through this here, baby. Don't you dare worry about it. You press down now, but God's going to pick you up, baby. Somebody ought to stop. in your circle of influence. Yeah. Look at the, circle, the inner circle of Jesus Christ. John loved him. <laughs> Peter recognized his greatness. The women were loyal. <laughs> Amen, somebody. James the Greater was chosen by our Savior on account of the privilege he would obtain in being the first of the apostles to gain a part of martyrdom. <laughs> and watch this. His father had power. Woo, you missed that. His, his father had power. That, that was his circle of influence. Somebody ought to say hallelujah up in here, up in here. Somebody say amen. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. I need to let you know, doorkeeper, if uh, somebody constantly asking you why are you still on this door, they're not the ones you need to be around. You need somebody to be on that door who ain't asking you why you're on that door, who's giving you a smile and telling you, sister, my brother, I'm right here with you. Don't you dare, I got your back. I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to push you. I'm going to encourage you. And I'm going to do everything. I'm somebody on the shelf right there. Good God Almighty. Ooh, this is a good preach, y'all. Y'all making this easy. Somebody say amen. So, 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 let me roll here. Let me roll. Y'all tired of me, y'all? Y'all tired of me? Let me roll here. Watch this. So, so, so. So I must have a predetermined course of action. And I need to position myself around the right people. But lastly, if I'm never going to give up, <laughs> I must be persistent. <laughs> Uh, I, I must be persistent. Somebody say persistent. Look at the text. Look at the text. Verse 4 and 5 says the judge ignored her for a while. But finally, he said to himself, I don't fear God. I care about people. But this woman is driving me crazy. <laughs> Somebody say amen. Yeah. Uh, ladies, y'all know what he's talking about in the text, don't you? Yeah. Because you know how to get your husband to move, don't you? Yeah. You know how to get him to do something that he ain't trying to do. Yeah. Somebody say amen. Yeah. You know how to keep it before him. Somebody say hallelujah. Yeah, you keep it before him and get him to move. Somebody say thank you. Why? Because eventually he's going to say, you are burning up my eardrums. Let me get up and take out this garbage. Somebody want to show her. Oh, glory to God. Oh, glory. The text says, uh, but this woman is driving me crazy. I'm going to see that she gets justice because she is wearing me out with her constant requests. She is wearing me out <laughs> with her constant requests. Let me say that again. Y'all miss it. She is wearing me out with her constant requests. Watch this. Watch this. This will make you go crazy. You want to run out of church when I give you this. When the text just told me that I must wear God out. The text just told me that. Watch this. Not only must I wear him, I got the right to wear God out. Somebody want to shout. When, that, when the Lord, the Holy Spirit, dropped that on me, I almost ran downstairs and shouted to my wife, I got, the, I got the audacity to have the right to wear God out. Somebody ought to shout, Holly. Woo! 
Oh God, you don't believe me? Here's some scripture. First John chapter 5, 14 and 15. This is the confidence which we have before him that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us in whatever we ask, we know that we have the request in which we ask his all. Oh, that's shouting right there. Somebody would have given us a book. Galatians 6 and 9 says, So let's not get tired of doing what is good. At just the right time, we will reap a harvest of blessing if we don't give up. Somebody would have shouted. Hey! Yeah, yes. Woo! Uh, look, verse 6 and 7. Watch this. It says, Then the Lord said, Then the Lord said, Say, Then the Lord said, Learn a lesson from this unjust judge. Even he rendered a decision in the end. So don't you think God will surely give you justice to his chosen people who cry out to him day and night? Will he keep putting them off? Somebody on the shop, thank you. Oh, God. Oh, I feel preachy up in here. Y'all, y'all are missed that. Y'all, 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 y'all are missed that. I'm going to go back over one more again. Somebody say amen. The text says, then the Lord said, learn a lesson from this unjust judge. Even he rendered a decision, a just decision in the end. So don't you think God will surely give justice to his chosen people who cry out to him day and and night will he keep putting them off. The text is telling us that even because, just because this woman wore God out, he's telling us that if we learn through all that we deal with, whether we're on the door or on the floor, whether we're on the pulpit, looking at you and looking at you, if we learn to wear God out, the text says that we will reap if we learn to wear God out. I love how Peterson uses this verse in the Message Bible. The Bible says, Peterson uses it, and he says, then the Master said, do you hear what that judge, corrupt as he is, is saying? So what makes you think God won't step in and work justice for his chosen people who continue to cry out for help? Somebody in here knows what I'm talking about. The Bible says, won't he stick up for them? Good God Almighty. The Bible says, I assure you, he will. And watch this, y'all. He will not drag his feet. Say yes. Say yes. I need my doorkeeper to understand now that as you stand on the door, as you deal with these people, as you deal with the muck and the clay, say yes. As you deal with this, you got to learn to wear God out. Look to the hills, for it's come your help, for your help, 
Don't you ever give up. I know the devil's been telling you that you're not worth it. I know he's been telling you who you think you are. I know he's been telling you this marriage is done. But don't you ever give up. Don't you ever give up. You better fight for your right to party. Somebody say hallelujah. You better fight for your right to party. Amen, somebody. Don't ever let the devil have his way. Don't ever let him cause you to quit and to walk away. Watch this. Let me give you something real good. If he never told you that, if he never told you it wasn't worth it, uh-huh. then you got to believe that it's not. All right. All right, but if he told you it wasn't worth it, uh-huh. watch this, brothers and sisters. That means it is. What a conundrum that is. What a conundrum that is. If he, if he told you you're not, it's not worth it, it means it is. If you if you get mad and want to leave, the devil's telling you to leave, not God. Then that means when you leave, when you leave, it's going to be hell to pay. <laughs> because you you you're not where you belong. <laughs> Watch this. We know the story of the of the man whom God spit on his eyes. Watch this. I'd rather God spit on me than slap me. <laughs> oh yeah, spit on me, Jesus, if it's going to help me. Spit right in my face if it's going to help me. But if he slap me, that means I'm done. Somebody say amen. Yeah. I don't know where this is coming from, but the Lord, Holy Spirit is downloading it into my mind, into my heart. Amen. I need you to understand, and I'm dealing with my wife and I'm dealing with a bunch of it. Divorce is at alarming rate right now. In the church, it is at an alarming rate right now. And because the devil's telling you, well, you don't belong with him. He, he ain't going nowhere. Well, you didn't tell him he can go anywhere. Did you tell him he's going to be great? Or did you say nothing and watch him die? That's right. That's right. That's right. When he lost that job, did you remind him of our bills? Or did you tell him, you can get another one? You can do it. You can get another one. I believe in you. I believe in you. Is that what you told him? Or did you tell him nothing? You know we got these bills, dude. Oh, God, the rich tomorrow. What we going to do? What we going to do? Amen, somebody. Amen. This is a time in which we're in where people are just giving up. They're giving up. They're giving up. I'm sure, Sister Jackson, I'm not singling you out, but I know, I know these folk come to you and say they want to quit. I know they come to you and say, oh, good God. Ooh, Holy Spirit, thank you. I want you to know. I want you to know from the bottom of my heart the Holy Spirit is downloading into me right now. Don't you ever... Give up. You are in the right place, and you stay in that place. Somebody say hallelujah. Don't you ever give up. I can promise you, I can promise you, if you're not there, it's going to fall apart. I'm telling you what I know, and this ain't something I'm thinking. This is what I know in the spirit. If you're not in position, it's going to fall apart. God made this position for you. Somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say amen. Don't you ever give up. That's the devil telling you to give up. That's the devil. Because he knows if you give up, there will be no order. There will be no structure. Watch this. There will be no love. Hallelujah. 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 There's a certain grace that God puts on people. 
to be in a certain position. Yeah, nobody else can fill them shoes. You have to be that person. Amen, somebody. Amen, somebody. When God wants you to move, you'll know it. Because he'll tell you it's time for you to move. And then he'll give you your replacement. Amen, somebody. This is real talk. Real talk. The whole overall concept is we have to learn how to pray. Consistently. Persistently. And you have to put people in your space who mean you good and not evil. Amen. And if we look at Joseph, we'll know that even your family can mean you evil. Because his brothers could have been the pit. But he dared to tell them what you meant for evil. God meant for good. Amen, somebody. So you have to understand that if you learn how to put people in your space, who are going to help you grow. Yeah. Things will happen for you. And I know y'all know this. I'm just going to share a little quick of my testimony. I know y'all noticed there's a difference in me from when the time I was here to now. Watch this. Because I changed my circle of influence. I put people in my life who had more than me, who, 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 who were where I was trying to go, who knew how to study the Bible in the way I wanted to study it, who knew how to preach and build a text the way I wanted to learn how to do it. So I put those people in my life. And that's why I'm where I am right now. I learned how to take a text apart from the strip it down to the lowest common denominator. Word studies. Paragraph studies. Amen. Amen. My brother DeMarle loses her didactic deduction. <laughs> All I'm telling you, I'm not bragging. I'm using an example for you through me. Put people in your space who love God. Who love Jesus. The Bible says if you do that, He'll save you and your family. Yes, that's right. That's right. Yes. Get rid of the negative influence. All my friends from back in the day, I have no connection with anymore. Right I don't have no Facebook. Why? Because if I dumped you, I don't need you finding me. How you doing? Oh, you looking good in that picture. Yeah. Yeah, my wife making me look good. I don't think it's a joke. If you're not making money on Facebook, ain't no need to have it. Amen. None but foolery. Amen. I shut the church's Facebook down. Because people's feeds had butts out and boobies out. I don't need to be looking at that. Amen. So I started out having them deleted, delete her, delete him, delete them, delete them. And it just kept coming, kept coming. You know what? Shut it down. We don't need it. Amen, somebody. I don't need to be looking at nobody's booby and boobies. I got those at home. Amen, somebody. Falling in sin. Because that's on my mind all day. I'm laying down thinking about what she had a big one, boy. Y'all know I keep it 100. I don't play no games. I keep it 100. There ain't no sense of sugarcoating up here. Because you ain't gonna understand sugarcoating. You gotta make it plain and clear. Where you can understand where it's coming from. Amen. Listen, I want to do something right quick. I feel this. Thank you, Holy Spirit. If you know right now 
that you need to increase in your prayer life. Don't be ashamed. If you know right now that you need to increase in your prayer life, I want you to bum rush this altar right now. Bum rush this altar right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I preached at a church where I had to, it was about half an hour, an hour and a half laying hands. I ain't doing that. Amen. I learned my lesson. <laughs> Somebody say hallelujah. I was worn out and, and tore up from the floor after that. But uh, we want to give just a bag of money to get up here. Watch this. Let me give you a little testimony while she's coming. My wife went to Dubai a couple of months ago. And something she told me blessed me cognitively. My wife said to me, whose phone is that? The devil is a liar. Whose phone is that? My wife told me that at a certain time of day, everybody shuts down and prays. Everybody. Everybody. Everything stops. And they pray. Why is it so hard for us in Christendom to, to do the same thing? Why can't we go in our bathroom in our jobs and pray? Do you realize if you introduce Jesus in that bathroom, he will circulate himself in that place of work of business? Woo! He will put himself in that business. And before you know it, that boss will be off your back. Amen, somebody. We all need a good prayer life, especially, especially preachers, especially preachers. Amen, somebody. If a preacher isn't seeking God's face at least three times a day, I got a problem. I got a problem. At least three times a day. Amen. If you're getting up out your bed, preacher, and the first thing you check is your phone, you got a problem. The first thing out your mouth when you open your eyes is, thank you, Jesus. And then you open your Bible. I know you got to be to work at nine. Get up at six like me. Amen, somebody. I want everybody, everybody, if you really, really, watch this, everything Jesus did was based on faith. Everything he brought over and brought to pass was based on faith. What do you say? Your faith has made you whole. Your faith has delivered you. If you really sincerely want to have a better prayer life, I want you to lift your hands right now in this place. From your heart. As I pray, Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, this is your people coming before you right now. Father, they are asking for something that you can give because you can give all things. The Bible says we can do all things through Christ who give us strength. So the strength is here right now with them standing in front of me. They're seeking a better, a persistent, a consistent prayer life. We're asking, oh God, whatever distractions are in their path, that you remove them right now in the name of Jesus. If it's that baby, let that baby sleep an hour later. If it's the job, let them get up a little earlier. God bless them right now. In the name of Jesus, I release your spirit on these people. I release your power on these people. I call upon you right now, oh God, to touch them right now in their secret place. You know what their secret place is, God. Touch them right now. In the name of Jesus. They're calling upon you. Wanting a closer relationship with you. Bless them, oh God, that they pray persistently and consistently. Bless them that they get their word every single day, oh God. Bless them to start the day with you and end the day with you. We thank you right now, Lord. 
for you are God and God all by yourself. We bless your holy name right now. In Jesus' name. If you believe it, shout hallelujah. Hallelujah.
And then you said it. I said that twice now. Yeah. Don't make it a third. <laughs> he speaks when she needs to be, when you need to be spoken to, and that's all that counts. That's all that counts. Amen. We're going to move on. We're going to have presentations from none other than our sister Moni. And
plan for it. If you don't plan, then you plan to fail. You got a plan for it. This is what I'm going to do at this time in my day. And you have to stick to that. That's what that means. Hallelujah. He gave me the right stuff. Hallelujah. We thank and praise the Lord for him. Hallelujah. Coming by him and giving us that wonderful, wonderful word. Now, without further ado, we're going to let you go. We bless our bishop in his absence. Yeah, Hallelujah. Yeah. A day of rest he has taken, uh, Pastor Duncan. He's taken a day of rest today. And uh, he, he, he really deserves it. He needs it. Uh, the last couple of weeks ago, he needed a day to come and bring that down. Got to bring that down. You're a priest. You're a priest, Pastor. You know. You know what he's going through. Yes. Yes. Amen. Amen. So, okay. <laughs> So, uh, okay, so close the mark, the day of benediction, every head bowed. Father God, in the name of Jesus, God, we thank you. Thank we you. praise you for the pre- precious word that you have given us all tonight. Yes, Help us to hide it in our hearts, oh God, that we may use it to be uplifted, and that we may do your will, oh God. God, we thank you, God, hallelujah, for traveling mercies on tonight, oh God. We ask that you give us each and every one travel mercy to their separate destination. And as we dismiss from this place and not from your presence, we ask that you continue to let your grace and your mercy overtake us each and every day and each and every hour. But without you, God, we can do nothing. We thank you for it right now. We praise you, God, in Jesus' name for all that was said and done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. May the Lord watch, the Lord watch between me and me while we're absent, absent one from another. From another. This, we ask, this we ask in Jesus' name. Jesus name. Amen. 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 Hug everybody. Hug each other. Hug each other.